Dear friends, dear family, dear followers, it is with a heavy heart um, that I bring you these messages today. I'm coming to you live from Los Angeles, a place that I've called my home for 30 years. I wasn't born here, but as a first-generation immigrant to this country, I'm proud to call myself an Armenian American. I also have very strong ties and roots to Armenia, which is my motherland and my country. The reason why I'm recording this live today is twofold, and I'm going to read a statement uh, in, our, in English. I won't be doing it in Armenian, unfortunately, but um, I believe those who don't speak Armenian need to know this message more than anybody else. First, I would like to take this opportunity to shed some light and educate my fellow humans on the recent transgressions and war crimes that have been committed against my peaceful country and my peaceful people in Armenia. I must use my platform here to speak up and speak out because our media here in the United States has not done their job in describing these attacks against Armenians and condemning the parties responsible for these attacks. The first part of my message here is for those who may not be familiar with who the Armenian people are, what our culture is about, or what the struggles are past and present. The second part of this video is for those of you who are Armenian, or at least for those of you who are familiar with what has been recently going on in uh, in Artsakh, which is also known as Gharabakh. I want you to keep listening because in a moment, I will share with you how we can create more money through my business and donate 100% of those funds to armeniafund.org, the primary charity which is raising funds to support the military in Artsakh and its struggle to defend its borders against dictators and aggressors uh, like the countries of Azerbaijan and Turkey. So let's briefly talk about what is currently going on in Armenia aka, uh, and, and Artsakh, a.k.a. Gharabakh, which is an independent and sovereign nation with a 99% Armenian population. Ten days ago, the dictator president Aliyev of Azerbaijan launched a military offensive on civilian settlements including Artsakh's capital of Stepanakert. Up until that point, a uh, ceasefire had been established since 1993, when Azerbaijan again launched an offensive against Artsakh and failed. Some may argue that Artsakh, aka Gharabakh, is internationally recognized as Azerbaijani territory according to some UN resolutions, but I will argue that the people of Artsakh have a right to self-determination. The demography of the region has been almost 100% Armenian for centuries, not just the last 30 years. Armenians are one of the oldest, oldest ethnicities in the world, with history dating back thousands of years. Azerbaijan has no right to claim that Artsakh is theirs, simply because it has and never has, it hasn't and will never be. Um, now Azerbaijan is not alone. They are actively being aided and abetted by Turkey, which is led by the modern-day Hitler, also known as Erdogan. Erdogan is currently leading Turkey to wage war in several countries and is a key destabilizing force in the region. We all know that former Turkey, also known as the Ottoman Empire, murdered 1.5 million uh, of its Armenian population in an attempt to ethnically cleanse the region during World War II from 1915 to 1918. So they are no stranger to this conflict with Armenia. With their aspirations of pan-Turkism, the leaders of Azerbaijan and Turkey have again set out to destroy the only country that stands in their way, Artsakh and Armenia. Earlier this year, the one threatened to finish what his ancestors had started, referring to the Armenian Genocide. He also pledged arms to Azerbaijan. Those same arms uh, were, the, were the arms used in the form of airstrikes and drones against the peaceful civilian populations of Artsakh. Turkey is also guilty of hiring Syrian rebels, jihadists and mercenaries, the same rebels who destroyed Syria, to send them to fight alongside the Azerbaijani army. During this time, the Azerbaijani government has instilled a social media and news media blackout, restricting the access to all social media sites and only allowing government-approved propaganda on television. A nationwide lockdown and shutdown of travel into, into and out of the country has also been established, preventing independent outside journalism into the country. The military of Azerbaijan has also indiscriminate, 
has also been indiscriminate in its use of lethal weapons like cluster bombs and ballistic missiles against civilian targets in Artsakh with no advanced warning. Turkey is not the only one helping Azerbaijan commit war crimes and atrocities against Armenians. There are two other major countries who are indirectly aiding Azerbaijan. Israel has been selling weapons to Azerbaijan and the United States has recently sent over $100 million in foreign aid to Azerbaijan. This means that my tax dollars, your tax dollars, have gone to fund terrorism in the Caucasus and military aggression against the peaceful nations of Artsakh and Armenia. To make matters even worse, the news media in the United States has done a very poor job of covering this story, using politically correct terms like conflict and dispute to describe what is going on in the region. They have failed to accur accurately represent what is truly happening in the region, and as such, the local Armenian communities of Los Angeles, here where I live, have risen up in arms over the media's lack of honest reporting. You may have noticed a freeway or two being shut down recently. We apologize for those inconveniences, but it's the only way for our voices to be heard. With all the odds against us, my people have somehow prevailed in Artsakh, and a small country of only 3 million pop population has seemingly defended itself for the last 10 days against two countries whose populations total more than 90 million people and whose military budget are tenfold of that of Armenia and Artsakh. And so this concludes the first part of my live statement here regarding what is going on in Armenia and Artsakh. And if you've learned something new today, please like and share this video to spread awareness of what is going on in the world. Turkey and Azerbaijan have started a war against Armenia and Artsakh during a global health crisis and a pandemic. Armenia did not ask for this war, but they will most definitely finish it. Now, the second part of my live is for those who are familiar with the situation and are willing to help with donations. At the time of this recording, the Armenian diaspora around the world have collected over $70 million, nearly matching the amount of foreign aid the U.S. has been sending to Azerbaijan. I believe together we can generate some extra funds that, can don that we can donate to Armenia Fund through my business. Now, I know that many of us uh, may not uh, have enough money, the thousands of dollars that people are donating, but even a small amount helps, and this is how we can create some small amounts. So, um, as you may know, the nature of my business is financial services. I help my clients with their financial uh, and insurance planning needs. And every time a client opens an account with our brokerage, a commission is paid on the sale of that product. And from now until the end of October, I'm personally pledging to donate 100% of my commissions to Armenia Fund. Here's how it's going to work. Between now and the end of the month, if you purchase a life insurance policy, a health insurance policy, a disability insurance policy, or long-term care insurance from us, we will donate $5 for every $1 of monthly premium that you pay. For example, if you purchase a life insurance policy and your monthly premium is 100 bucks a month, I will personally donate today $500 to Armenia Fund. Next, between now and the end of the month, if you open a retirement account through our firm, we will donate $25 for every $1,000 that's invested into the account. For example, if you roll over $100,000 from a former employer's plan, like a 401k you left behind, to a new plan with our company, I will personally donate 2,500 bucks to Armenia Fund. Finally, if you are currently working and you have a retirement plan like a 401k, 457b, IRA, and your employer has told you that you cannot touch these funds while you're still working for them, this is not true. And this is the way that we are about, what I'm about to share with you is a way that we can create money out of thin air. And so did basically due to the recent health crisis of COVID, everyone's entitled to access up to $100,000 penalty free from their retirement plans. Yes, while you're still working there. This means that you could potentially take your 100,000 of retirement funds, roll them over to somewhere safer, more secure in a retirement vehicle, maybe like an annuity or an indexed annuity. And by doing this together, we can create an extra 2,500 bucks out of thin air and donate it to our soldiers fighting on the front lines in Armenia. 70 million is a lot of money guys, but to fight a war, is also very, very expensive. And I believe the Armenian military right now is spending 30 or $40 million a day to fight the war. And, and this means that we need to step up our game and keep donating. 
Um, I don't want to hear you say I, I've donate. I'm donating 10%. You, that's ridiculous. We pay 30% in taxes. You guys should at least be donating 30%. Um, and, and don't say I've already donated. That's like imagine a, a, a soldier on the front line comes back the next day and says, I fought yesterday. I'm not going to fight today. That's ridiculous. So if you're interested in helping this way, I'm ready to help our people. I will start by personally donating a thousand bucks. I'll donate it right now, screenshot it and share it. Um, any amount will help guys. Even if you get the policy and cancel after a month, the commissions are advanced, which means that um, the commissions are paid as soon as they charge your account the first month's uh, uh, payment. And we can still get that money and send it into our soldiers. My company pays every Tuesday, every Friday, um, I'll screenshot my commissions page every week as proof that the money is being donated. Um, I'll also screenshot the donation pages and receipts. And also, if you're an employee of one of uh, our major U.S. corporations um, and can help with like doubling or tripling this money, we can do it that way. I'll funnel it through you first. Um, I would appreciate the, that help if, if you know someone that works for U.S. Corp. Uh, like Google, I think, is doing four times right now. Um, and even if you have a policy uh, from before or, or you, you know, we can look at upgrading it, making it better, generating money that we can, you know, send to our sisters and brothers on the front line. Um, even if you're happy with whatever benefits, current retirement plans and stuff you have to work, we can make, take a look at making it better. It never hurts to make, take a second look and make it better. If we can upgrade your policy and not spend any money, why not do that and generate some commission and send it to our, send it to our brothers and sisters. Um, anyways, uh, I'm patiently waiting for you guys to respond here. Let's do this. Let's do it together. Let's make an impact on the global scale, guys. Our people need us. We have the means. We, we just need to take action. Um, I'm challenging all of my colleagues, by the way, um, I love you guys, but you guys need to step up your game. You guys need to donate. I don't want to hear this 10%, 20% stuff. You guys need to donate as much as possible. Um, and this is one way, what I just mentioned, to create money basically out of thin air and to send it to our people. So if you have an old 401k, let's talk about rolling it over. If you don't have a life insurance policy, let's talk about getting you one. If you have one and it's old or you want to take a look at second look at it, let's do that. Let's use our businesses to create more money and send it to our people. Uh, not having any money to send is not an excuse. We all have two hands, two feet. We all live in America, the greatest country in the world with opportunities left and right. There should be absolutely no reason that um, we cannot send uh, as much money as we want to or need to. So um, it's great what we've done so far, but that's in the past. And we need to continue and, and do this until the war is over. Um, if by the end of October the war is not over, I'll extend the donations for November. If by November they're not o the, the war is not over, I'll extend it until December. Uh, we, need to, we need to send money to our people. That's the only thing they need now. Um, all, they have all the supplies. They have all, all the blankets. They can get the sleeping bags. They can get the food. They can get the, the military needs the money. They, they don't need anything else, guys. And with that... I will conclude this video, this live. Please share it. Please uh, send it to everybody you know. Um, we're raising awareness this way and we're also raising donations and funds this way. Uh, my heart goes out to everybody in Armenia, everybody who's lost family. It's like, it's crazy, you guys. We, we, we go to bed with them on our minds. We wake up with them on our minds and, and uh, it's unacceptable what's going on. In 2020, to have a war, an ethnic war, uh, uh, it's it's unaccept unacceptable. And what 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 Erdogan and Aliyev are doing, uh, it needs to stop. So please share this video, guys, and I'll catch you guys on the front lines. I'm gonna head out to Los Angeles Times right now, the building they're protesting right now, and I'll see you guys over there. Take care.